Welcome to a new edition of the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino. On this episode, we talk with songwriter, entrepreneur, photographer, and author, Lindsay Miller. She runs Kids Mindfulness Coaching, and it's all about building emotional intelligence skills like empathy, self-awareness, resilience, and problem solving. With families facing epic levels of stress and kids experiencing alarming levels of anxiety, everyone needs more ways to help kids feel safe and happy. About three years ago, she founded Kids Mindfulness Coaching. She opens up about her life, her ambitions, role models, and so much more. Enjoy this interview. Nice to meet you. Thanks for taking a minute out today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. You bet. So before we get into your life, I want to know how you survived COVID. How how was that time period for you? And now that we're kind of emerging out of that, how did it change you? That's such a good question. Um, I think it changed me by making me appreciate simple things more. Uh, I think anytime we navigate something that throws us out of our routine, it, you know, we have to kind of tune into what is going well and what is working. So simple pleasures and simple moments are something that seem highlighted a lot more post-COVID. Like I'm willing to is to see them and appreciate them for what they are instead of looking for like a big thing or the next busy, you know, task I have to, I have to complete. So you're a creative sort, you know, songwriter, photographer, there's a lot of things that go into who you are. So I want to simplify this so everybody can kind of understand you better. So I'm going to transport you to the front of a grade school class for career day, third graders. And one of the kids looks up at you and says, what do you do for a living, and how are you qualified to do it? How would you answer that child? That's another good question. I would say that I help kids manage stress and help them know how to use simple activities like breathing to help them calm down in moments where they feel overwhelmed. And I'm qualified to do that because I was a kid once, In college, I studied how kids grow, and I've had a lot of moments where I've had to learn to use breathing to calm down, and so I've thought of playful and fun ways to teach it to kids, and I used those ways with my daughter when she was little, and it helped her, and it's helped a lot of other kids since then to be able to manage hard moments and hard situations with a little bit more ease. So to go back to that first question about COVID, you know, I have a couple teenagers in the house. I have one that's neurotypical and one that's on the autism spectrum. And I've seen the benefits of what's happened out of COVID for them. And I've also seen what it's done to stunt certain things. So I would imagine all of the populations of people have been affected by what happened. But I think the kids are particularly vulnerable in a way because they don't have the the, the baggage that we do that, that are older. So, would you see in, in what you're doing in your business that that's kind of what's been the trend, so to speak? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think what you're seeing with your kiddos is something that a lot of parents are seeing. And one of the ways we talk about that in my business is that, like, as adults, we've had, you know, I've had 42 years of learning, you know, skills and tools to manage stress. And even during COVID, those weren't really enough. You know, <laughs> like I was facing stress beyond what I had the skills and capacity for, and I've been learning to manage stress for 42 years. So for kids, you know, asking kids to manage it with an accumulated stress response or accumulated stress tools that are, you know, of nine years or 12 years, it's just too much. It's a lot, right? And so there are some things that they were able to, like, let go of that weren't stress-inducing, you know, like they avoided some stressors, like, which is, I think, what you're saying, that, that, and that was insulating and supportive for them. And then in other ways, they were um, facing bigger stress than what they had capacity for, and they were doing it without their, their community, their social circle for a lot of the time, and then that created, you know, its own ramifications and consequences, but it also cut them off from a source of support that for kids is uh, really, really important. So as somebody that is an entrepreneur, a photographer, an author, and a songwriter, you're obviously a highly driven individual. Take me back to your childhood, where you were born and raised, and how these seeds began in you. That's a great question. Uh, I was raised in Southern California, 
Um, so it was a low key, relaxed environment for the most part, West, West coast. Um, a lot of, uh, time with family and friends and just a supportive community around me really helped me to create like some coping mechanisms early on. Um, and then throughout my teenagers and adult life, I had navigated some, some challenges and looking back, like it would have been really helpful to have some of the tools that I teach now in those moments. And so whenever I'm considering mindfulness and looking at it through the lens of like, how can it have the biggest impact? I always look at kids and think if you, if we can teach them those tools when they're little so that they have them for the whole rest of their life to navigate whatever struggles they're facing, like, why wouldn't we? That seems like the best place to start in terms of like letting mindfulness sink into our culture and become just part of our everyday walk and talk. So the other part of, you know, being strong in this life is having good mentors or heroes around you. Who have those been for you that have provided you that strength? I definitely say my mom. Uh, I have like a very loving family unit, and that's been something that I've leaned on heavily. And so I think her ability to be gentle and just show up and be with people wherever they're at um, has definitely helped me to, you know, cultivate that quality in my own life and then show up for my clients and the, the families that I work with, no matter what they're navigating. Um, I also have appreciated people who have tried to find a different way of seeing things. So like Maria Montessori, I love that she created a education system that worked for children. So instead of trying to like fit children into education, she fit education to children and that's what I try to do with mindfulness. Like instead of making mindfulness something that they have to kind of like conform to, I try to help. Um, I try to help mindfulness conform to them and help them see how it can just flow seamlessly into their lives. Because I teach it in a playful and fun way that resonates with their everyday experience. So, as a creative person, has there been an album or a book or something in your life that's resonated? continually for you or something that was kind of an awakening for you artistically? I love the song um, from Celine Dion, Ashes. And I feel like beauty from ashes has been a phrase that I've used a lot. And so um, that song from Deadpool, she, she just sings it. And it's so beautiful. Like, can beauty come from ashes? And I think over and over in my life, that's been the case that it can. It takes some hope and it takes... Um, some intention to try to like make those moments of ashes turn into something else, but that's definitely been a touchstone for me and something that's come back to again and again. Every day you wake up, there's a there, there's a a list of things. There's things that we want to do that we look forward to. What is that for you when you wake up every day? What is it that you look forward to the most? I look forward to being able to pet my cute dogs and take them on a walk. To being able to see my daughter smile to being able to watch the sun either come up over the mountains or set over the mountains and tucked away in a valley. Um, and just seeing nature evolve and change outside. I love just being present with everyday moments, and that's what I look forward to. In addition to, of course, connecting with people that I love um, and being able to support my, my clients and the families that I work with. Are you still in Southern California? No. I visit as often as I can, though. Okay. I just went out to San Diego this summer. I, I actually went from Colorado to uh, Southern California, so it was quite nice oh, to see that part of the world. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, so let's say you have a dream tonight, and you run into the younger version of yourself, say in your 20s, and you uh -huh. can give that younger version a piece of advice based on what you've learned and lived throughout your life. And this is more about wisdom than regret. What would you tell your young version? These are such good questions. I would tell her to trust herself uh, and to be patient in um, letting, like, her intuition and instincts come to fruition. You know, whenever I talk to musicians, I, I specialize more in jazz than anything else. You know, I always talk about yeah. what, what award did you win that meant the most? Not, you know, it's never fair to say what's your favorite award because that's never the goal. But in everybody's line of work, there's things that happen that you get recognized for that just kind of feel good. What was that moment for you? What, what fan letter, what happened in your work experience that you still remember was a good compliment? Um, you know, when I was working with kids back in, it was my early um, 
early 20s, one of the kids that I was working with, I was working with kids who were, you know, neurodiverse. And so they were trying to figure out their way in a system that wasn't super supportive. And at the end of the year, one of the girls wrote me a note that said, um, your life is like a bowl of cherries when Mrs. Miller's in it. And I've kept that little note all these years because I think that being able to, like these kids were struggling with some pretty significant struggles, both personally and at school, and being able to show up for someone and help them feel like even though they're carrying heavy burdens, that they still have so many things that are great about their life and that she can say her life is like a bowl of cherries. Um, but it's touched my heart ever since, and it inspires me to try to show up in that way for people. So when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Are you happy with what's happened? Yeah. You know, I was talking to my daughter about this the other day. I wanted, I was uh, moving between teacher, psychologist, and social worker, and I was trying to land somewhere. I landed in child development. So I've kind of created a, a, a career for myself that involves all, all of those things, and it's really rewarding, and I love it. Excellent. So everyone has a perception or an idea of who they think you are, your family, your friends, your clients, but ultimately you live your life. You have a perception of who you are. Who do you think you are? A fellow traveler who has a deep desire to connect with this world that we're on and the other people that are navigating it with me. So, Lindsay, if anybody wants to know more about you, your services, anything related to you at all, where's the best place on the web for them to go? www.thestressnanny.com. Wonderful. This has been great. Thank you for opening up, and good luck with everything. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino, where we cover the world of art, literature, and music around the globe. If you want to hear more interviews, visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube. Thanks again for listening, and until next time.